So I hope you understand how the memory potential changes within the hot cells. And so now we can go back into our main diagram and look at the action potential of a cardiac muscle cell and the changes in the membrane potential. So here we have the x-axis with time in milliseconds and the membrane potential in, the, in millivolts on the y-axis. And here we have negative 90 millivolts, negative 60, negative 30, and 0, and 30. Just after the heart muscle contracts and releases blood out, it will be, it will, it will be at rest, just, short, just have a short rest. And after this short rest, which is typically negative 90 millivolts, there will be a big jump in the membrane potential to become more positive. And it will shoot up to positive 30 millivolts. And this process is known as depolarization, where we have a fast influx of sodium ions from the outside to the inside. So it changes the membrane potential to become more positive. The depolarization does not go past positive 30. This is the peak. After depolarization, there is a plateau phase where the sodium ions stop moving in, so there's a close in the sodium channels, but there's a slow influx of calcium ions through the L-type calcium channels. From, so calcium are moving from the outside to the inside, and so there's still a sort of positively charged memory potential. So what is really happening is that there's no more sodium moving in from the outside to the inside. There is still a slow movement of calcium ions from the outside to the inside, and there's no movement of potassium from the inside to the outside. And then after the plateau phase, we have the repolarization phase, where the calcium ions stop going in, and there is uh, potassium ions moving out, which makes, which causes the membrane potential to become more negative. And so it goes back to the negative 90 millivolts. So essentially what is happening is that from negative 90, it jumps up to 30. And this is the contraction, if you've seen a skeletal muscle um, graph of a contraction. Okay, this might sound confusing, but the point at which uh, action potential changes the membrane potential of a heart cell to, to where it finishes is a period where a second action potential cannot occur. This period is known as the absolute refractory period. To better explain this, let's look at a graph looking at what happens when a heart muscle receives an action potential and when a skeletal muscle receives an action potential. So for a skeletal, for a skeletal muscle here, when it receives an action potential, it will contract, like so. However, a second action potential can be generated straight away, which creates a stronger contraction like so. And this, and this is essentially where we have a continuous uh, a stimulation of action potentials on the muscle. So for skeletal muscle, action potentials can be generated before the first action potential has finished, which then creates a basically overlapping effect until it reaches a point where the tension can no longer pass, and this point is known as the tetanus. It's just a tetanus. For heart muscles, an action potential creates contraction, but a second action potential cannot be generated. It can only be generated after the first action potential has completely finished, after the contraction has completely finished. And so this is known as the absolute refractory period. When a second action potential cannot be generated, it can only be generated after the first action potential has finished. Okay, so we know that the muscle, cardiac muscle cells require an action potential to change its membrane potential. But where do these action potentials come from? Well, for skeletal muscle, if you remember, they receive the action potential essentially from a neuron, which passes it down to skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle cells are different in that they receive action potentials, which are generated by a group of cells known as pacemaker cells. And this is independently of the neuron's innervation of the heart. So it's the pacemaker cells which give, which produce, generates the action potential for the cardiac muscle cells to pump. So this red dot I'm drawing here on the right atrium is the main pacemaker cells which generates the action potential and causes the heart, the heart muscles to contract, pumping the blood out of the heart in unison. Now let's have a closer look at the pacemaker cells of the heart in more detail. 
So here we have the hot anatomy of the hot again, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. Here we have our main pacemaker cell, known as the sinoatrial node, or SA for short. And then we have the, another pacemaker cell right next to it, known as the atrioventricular node, or AV. So essentially, the SA node will generate an action potential all throughout the, right, the atriums of the heart, and also pass it onto the atrioventricular node, which will pass it on then to the bundle of His, onto the bundle branches over here, on, on the muscle fibers, and then all onto the Purkinje fibers. And essentially, this action potential will be generated all through the heart, causing the ventricles then to pump the blood out of the heart. I hope that makes sense. So the main pacemaker cells are the SA node. This is the usual pacemaker, the main pacemaker. And its action potential causes the heart to beat 70 to 80 beats per minute. Now the very interesting thing about the heart is that the heart can still function if the SA node is damaged or is broken, because then the AV node can take over. However, the AV node will only cause 40 to 60 beats per minute, which is lower. And then again, it has been found out experimentally with animal studies that if, if the AV node is also damaged, the bundle branches the, and the bundles of His can take over. But this will only cause about 20 to 40 beats per minute. So it's very slow indeed, and you probably need some form of heart surgery to fix this up. So knowing the, knowing the pacemaker cells, let's look at the pacemaker activity of cardiac autorhythmic cells. So the activity of these pacemaker cells, because they, they function without the help of neurons. They create action potentials without the help of neurons. So here we have the same graph that we looked at for the cardiac muscle cells, the X being the time in milliseconds and the Y axis being the membrane potential in millivolts. We have negative 60, negative 40, negative 20 millivolts and zero millivolts here. Negative 43 is the threshold for these pacemaker cells, for the uh, sinoatrial node in particular. So what happens here in phase one? We have uh, deep the pacemaker potential. Which is, which is where we have closed potassium channels and we have open T-type calcium channels where we have a slow influx of calcium ions from the outside to the inside, which, create, which causes the memory potential to become more negative. And once it reaches this threshold of negative 40 due to the pacemaker potential, it will shoot up to zero millivolts. This is depolarization, where an action potential begins when an action potential is generated by these pacemaker cells. And this is caused by the opening of L-type calcium channels, allowing more calciums to come in. And so this action potential will be generated, which will then pass on to the cardiac muscle cells, right? Following depolarization, we will have repolarization of the pacemaker cell, where, the cal will, where both the calcium ion channels, the L-type and the T-type, will be closed. But the, K, the potassium channels will, will open up, which will allow potassium ions to go from inside the cell to the outside, which will then bring the, the, the membrane potential back to negative 60, essentially. And this process will keep repeating itself. As you can see, negative 60, we have the pacemaker potential reaching the threshold causing depolarization, which will cause an action, generate an action potential. After the action potential is finished, it will repolarize back down to negative 60, and then the pacemaker potential begins again, and the cycle just continues on. So, this is how the pacemaker cells generate action potential, which will then pass it on to the cardiac muscle cells, which will change their membrane potential, which will then cause contraction. Hope this makes sense. Hope this video was good. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and share. Um, next, hopefully, we'll look at the cardiac cycle and the uh, blood supply to the heart itself, the coronary arteries, etc. Thank you.